All right. 22 Rogue Glide Level 1, I think I was calling it. Upgrades, episode something. I, I don't remember which one. We did slip-ons. We did the rear lights. Those are all much better. And now we're going to do the front lights. I'm way more excited about the front lights and the rear lights. Not because the rears aren't awesome. Don't go the wrong way with that. Um, it's that I've done most of that before, right? But there's a brand new headlight called the x Light that just came out, like just hit the interwebs and stuff. And I've never seen one in person before. So we're going to put that on. That's going to be really cool. So let's get started. So there we have my 22 Rogue Light. I have done absolutely nothing to the front lighting, all stock. Stock windshield, headlight, turn signals, etc., etc. What we're doing today is we're swapping out the regular headlight for the brand new Custom Dynamics X Light, which is literally just came out, which is, as you can tell, it has like X's in it. Uh, we're adding, I think I've been calling these like fang lights. Maybe they call them that too, which add a bit of chrome right here that have a nice directional you know, running light and turn signal. Uh, we're adding the vent lights that add a nice, you know, stainless steel kind of mesh in there and also have a light. And then we're adding the bullet style turn signal. So we're gonna remove this entire assembly and put a really cool tucked in uh, white running light, uh, amber turn signal bullet light on there. This stuff's not hard. It really isn't. If you've never taken your fairing off, it's not something to be afraid of, I promise you. Uh, you basically got these two screws on each side that take the windshield off. Uh, you've got one screw under your speaker here, and then on each side, one of these two is structural. I think it's the top, I don't remember. You can take them both out, it's no big deal. If you take them both out, it's just the vent, the little, the little this guy comes off, it's no big deal. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is take the windshield off. Oh, 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 sorry, one more bolt. This one on each side comes out too. So. This goes through the turn signal into the fairing, and then this is bolted onto that. So those turn signals are gonna come away with the fairing cap. They plug in up here under this. So the procedure, take out the windshield screws, and then after the windshield comes off, you grab this vent and it just goes pop, and it actually just is on with some clips. So don't be afraid, pull straight up, it's gonna come off, no big deal. Uh, and then you're gonna, reach down and pop these out from the back side. So another quick shout out to my buddy, Steve at Sick Baggers. You know, we've all done the plastic pullers, and all the stuff to get these out. But once you got this off, it's much easier to stick your fingers down in there and just go boop from the back side and pop those out. Then there's a single Torx screw, I think 25 or 27, I'll say in the video. Uh, then we take those out, we take those Allen bolts out, and then this entire assembly with those turn signals, after you unplug them up here, uh, comes away and then we'll do is we'll what we'll do is we'll swatch swap little da, da, da. we'll swap the turn signals off of that while it's off the bike onto the new bullet style we'll add the vent ones uh, we'll swap out the headlight which is really easy too, just a couple bolts and a single plug and then after we get it all back together you put the fang lights on before you put the windshield on or I'm sorry it's part of the process when you put the windshield on so I'm not making sense today I apologize but Hey, these videos are free, deal with it. <laughs> I have such a bad attitude. All right, tools you'll need. Uh, on mine, it's Phillips screws holding the windshield on. So you need a Phillips screwdriver, uh, a Torx bit set, a Allen, I call Allen, but Emily, a hex you know, socket set. And I'm using my quarter inch with an extension and then a 3 8 adapter. Why? Because the littler ones of these are quarter inch, I can't remember which ones. Those are 3 8 and this is just easier to work with in tight spaces. So. Uh, this is like my favorite tool when you're doing fairing stuff because it's smaller. So uh, you could do it with a 3 8 ratchet. It's just, for me, that's easier. That's it. All right, now uh, let's get to work. It's the lawn cutting apocalypse outside. So I have the garage door closed for a minute. Rare, huh? That you see me in here with the garage door closed and the lights on. But I wanted to show you real quick as I take out those screws we just described, the removal of the top vent because I think just from friends, it scares the hell out of some people doing this and it's nothing to it, but I understand. So I'm gonna show you do mine where you just like pull her out. So I've removed the four screws and the windshield, which reminded me I need to get clockworks. I, that's my favorite windshield. Anyway, um, how this comes off. You grab it here and you pull, get, let go. Okay, the other way. Grab from this end. What the hell was I doing? Yeah, so you don't grab here, you grab here. 
and then it just pops right off. Good God, see? I don't, I don't edit, so I'm gonna leave it in. And then, what I was talking about for removing the speaker grills, a lot of people, including myself in the past, have gotten down in here with like a plastic trim removal tool or something like that. And if you just go from the back side here, it, it pops out real easy. I can't do it one-handed, but it, no, I can. So you just pop it out there and then grab it and just work it out with your hands. So I'm going to put this down so I can do this properly, but thanks again to Steve from Sick Baggers. <laughs> pop it from the backside. It's a lot easier. All right, so I popped out the speaker grills. And just so you know, too, you don't push from this side. You push from this side, right? So you pop it out from the back, grab this side, and there's teeth on little clips that pop out of here. If you pull it from this side, you could break the little retaining piece. So pop it out on that side. Now, this bolt here is what we're taking out, which is a T27, right? So that is actually a bolt that holds the, uh, the outer frame on. So it's one on each side. And then these are 25s. So of course, there's a different side. So these two 27s I'll take out, then those 25s. And then we've got, I'll tell you what size in a second, this one Allen. Uh, let's do this first though. While this is all open and we're not doing anything else, unplug this. This is your turn signal. So they're going to be sitting right up here, right on display, nothing to it. So push down right there and unplug those. Because this wire and the turn signal again are attached to this. So when you pull it away, that's what you're going to need to do. Let's stop there. So that's done. Let me take, uh, those out and then these out and uh, I'll be back when we do the Allen. Whoo, it's hot in this garage. All right, so the Allen is a 3 16 So you're gonna take these out on either side and then the whole thing is gonna come loose away from the bike. So I need to put the camera down so I can not drop a brand new piece of painted bodywork <laughs> on the garage floor. So. One more screw and this is gonna come away from the uh, the bike easily. Whew, got some air in here. All right, so uh, I'm gonna do the headlight first because I'm too excited to see the new X headlight. Uh, it's There's four Allen bolts that hold your headlight into the bike. I'll show you real quick. And it is in fact 3 16 so the same size hex head that you use to take the turn signal bolts out. So I'll show you real quick. All right, so right chair, you can see that. There's one on this side too that's up under here. You can't see as easily, but it's there. Yeah, trust me. And then these two. So four bolts and the entire, including these, these vents are gonna come away at the same time. Uh, and there's just one plug in the back of the headlight to take that away. Because I'm doing the vent lights, I have to look at directions to see what the order is gonna be to put it all back in. But those four bolts are what's holding this whole thing in. So nothing to it. Okay, so I just looked at the directions for the vent inserts. I took them out of the box already. But what I'm talking about and also this might be controversial. Uh, when I was talking to the Custom Dynamics people, we were talking about the fact that the mouth of a road glide is all black, regardless of the trim of the bike. So we were kind of thinking it could be fun to do that with the aftermarket stuff. So my, my uh, you know, sort of fang lights up top and the lower bullets and all that stuff are gonna be chrome just like the rest of the bike, but the headlight and the vent inserts were doing black. That might be kind of cool, I don't know. I've never seen it before. Let me know down below what you think. But so here's the vent light. So if you were leaving the stock headlight, it replaces this. Okay, this might be the wrong one. It's probably the other side. But you basically just take these T25s out, and then you screw those onto the headlight, and then put it all back. We're changing the headlight. So, but I do need these screws because the directions say to reuse those. So this is really easy stuff if you're just doing these but let me go get the new headlight we'll open that up all right so what i did was i harvested these screws i needed and took the bezels off the factory headlight uh threw that in the corner because i have a lot of friends here that one of them's going to blow a headlight and i got no doubt so i'll have a spare um so the four screws are out i have not opened this box yet so i'm excited because that's pretty wild and they just came out so i think these are white and then the the x turns amber with a turn signal i honestly don't know but I think it looks a lot cooler in black. So that's why I went ahead and did the black headlight and the black inserts, but let's see. Uh, and in person, I'd imagine it's gonna look like the picture. <laughs> Throw that aside, wow. Yeah, that's cool. Quite a bit more aggressive look than stock, right? Yeah, all right, so I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna mount the vent 
guard, mesh, jobby, niner, light, whatever thing to this, so it'll be ready to go back in the bike. And then we have to do the bullet turn signals on the outer fairing. That's just one screw holding those on from the backside. So throw those on. Oh, another thing you're gonna need, which I should have said, is some electrical tape or something like that, because there's tape holding that wire on the inside. You're gonna need to resecure the wire to the inside of the fairing. So uh, the foam tabs, you're gonna tear them, you know, when you pull the wire out. So. Uh, all right, let me do this and then toss all the trash and then we'll get on those and then we'll get ready to put that back on. And the last thing we'll do is those fang lights up top that are sitting in the package right there. All right, so everything's, these are screwed back on. Uh, they're secure to the light, so they just kind of sit in that vent area. And something I noticed, these are not turn signals. They're just, they're just running lights. So that's cool, that, you know, not an issue here because those are gonna be white running lights and turn signals. So, I mean, you know, how many you need, right? There's a different version of this headlight, FYI, that's like the Pro Glow one, that this all does crazy colors and all that sort of stuff. Maybe that one's a turn signal. I, I don't know. Uh, and maybe not. Don't quote me because I don't have that light. But these are not turn signals. So, okay, cool. All right, now let me, I guess, change out the bullets, right? I don't know. This is not, not a professional operation. <laughs> and just so you know, all these lights plug in line with your existing harness. So if I was just doing this, the ones I unplugged earlier up top, this, these are just plug in line and that does the job. So there's not a lot of, there's no wiring or snipping or soldering or nothing. It's always really easy. So, all right, now we'll do the, uh, the conversion on the actual fairing. So all you're doing is this one bolt there, okay? Hold this on. So once that's off, you just unclip that wire. This foam piece was hanging. I might be able to save that one. That's weird. Uh, and then that one there. So you're gonna use some electrical tape or something just to secure the wire to the back of the inside of the fairing, but not much how-to here, right? I mean, this guy has exactly the same backside, for lack of a better word, as this guy. So the bullet goes on there, bolts in from the backside, you path the wire, the, there's no rewiring or anything, the, the harness is there, and you're done. I mean, that's, that's now attached. It's really easy stuff, but it's a huge upgrade because I've always thought those stock turn signals just kind of stick out. You know, they like they look like the turn signal off a different bike. They just kind of stuck there. Whereas those look like an intentional bullet style turn signal that hug really close to the fairing and all that. Uh, and they're also a white running light and amber turn signal. I've got them on the Weiss bike too, you can see there. But you'll see better in a second. Let me swap that out. I should buy a freaking lottery ticket, dude. I saved all those. The bike's brand new. I mean, it has like 250 miles on it. It's a 22. So, like, they just weren't down that hard, and I was able to peel them back. So I saved all three of those. It's the little victories, boys and girls. Um, I, I should have mentioned, too, this is a plastic inner piece that goes on, like, the you know, the back side of the turn signal. Um, this just falls away, and that's how you get the wire out. It's not, not to be afraid of. It's just reality. I thought I'd mention that. And that guy needs to go back on there nice and straight, pay attention to where this is, okay, versus this end, because that needs to be sitting on there nice and flush. So when you, um, woo, when you, there, see that, see that tooth? Make sure that's on there right. So when you screw this back together, if that's like that or whatever, fix it, because this is, you know, the mount for the actual fairing, this stuff needs to be sitting on there correctly. So just, sorry about that, I should have mentioned that, but pay attention to make sure that's right. There you go. This is one of my very favorite upgrades. Seriously, I just think that looks so much nicer. They're like ball milled and all that stuff. So something to think about. You, typically, you would turn put the Pro Beam inserts in your turn signals on a Rogue Glide. So just like the rears, you know, that we did earlier, the bulb just comes out and then the new one goes in and you put the new lens on all that stuff. And they're white running lights, which actually put out a lot of light. They're nice like driving lights and amber turn signals. That's a real common upgrade. And those are 120 or something like that dollars. Just saying, if you're okay wrenching, if you're okay taking your fairing off and a fairing cover, not even the fairing, it's just the outer skin. And doing this, I don't know how much more those are, if it's twice as much, you know, whatever. Those are a lot cooler for the money, right? Just a thought, so something to think about. Uh, now I gotta mount the headlight and the bike and put it all back together because we're done, right? Except for the fang lights that go up on the windshield, and that's a very much like a last minute kind of thing, so. All right. All right, so a tip, as I was thinking about as I put this back on. Um, first off, offer the fairing up. Make sure your wires are all free and not caught up in anything. Offer up the fairing outer to the bike. 
and do the speaker screws first. Why? Because they have a nice spot to grab with your fingers and you're just trying to stabilize the fairing on the bike so it doesn't fall off. And you can easily hold the fairing and start one. It's just easy to get that. So do the speaker screws first, finger tight. And the second point is, and remember this one, <laughs> batwing fairings, when you put the outer back on, they just fall into place. They just, I don't know, maybe it's because they've made them for 70 years or whatever it is, but the outer skin just goes plop, you know, right on there. Um, the road glide, when you put the outer fairing back on, holes rarely just fall into place and line up right. And they're just more fiddly. So don't tighten nothing. Like everything is just finger tight, three to four turns, hold it in place, that kind of thing. And then when you have everything in, so the outer Allen bolts from the turn signal, you know, the lower turn signal, all that stuff, just get a, several turns on it with your finger. Uh, and then when they're all in, then go back through and tighten them up. Probably the reverse order. So, you know, tighten the screws, the speaker screws first, then probably the little lower ones by the, by the guards, and then the turn signal ones, and then of course the windshield last. So just top tip. Let me finish this and I'll be right back. All right. I have hooked everything up and tested everything. So the fang lights, these, I call these that, I don't know, it's not what they're called, um, but they come with a splitter. So you got one lead from the bike, okay, that you're splitting a couple different ways. Not a big deal. The lower little bullets need this little box in between. So I, what I did is I put the splitter off the, uh, off the bike and then just went to town so that um, the, the little bullet lights got on its own dedicated line these boxes so it's i think it's a regulator of some kind because those lights are small or something anyway so i'll show you before i button it all up so you got a white the hell i can't see in the camera okay so you got, a, you got a white little bullet light there the headlight right the side vent and the fang light okay and then when you put the turn signals on you've got a what they call dynamic light there okay you got this little guy here and you got that one down there so that is the turn signal setup so hell of a lot safer and my phone's ringing all right so we're all done i i'm sold on the black headlight and vent lights with chrome trim i think it works personally let me know what you think in the comments and let me close the garage door yeah because i'll show the lights on and all that but we didn't really see it in the dark. But yeah, that's... I'm real happy with that. That looks really cool. I think that, again, you can get... The side vents are really cool in chrome. The wife has them. And you can get this headlight where the entire inside is chrome also. But I'm just curious if it's just too much chrome. I know that sounds crazy for me to say because I'm chrome obsessed. But I think it might be too much. So I like the black headlight. But... Got the, uh, the fang lights up there, the side vents, the X headlight. And again, I'll put links to this stuff in, in the description, but check their website because I know you can get this in a Pro Glow that the, the X's change colors and all that stuff. And then the, the lower lights down there. I'm real happy with that. And then in the last video, we did the rear, so I'll show you that real quick. We did the, uh, the bag, bags, you know, little lights and change those for the color changing dynamic turn signals so these flash amber and those flash amber and then the uh tri bar light at the bottom from the factory is just a running light and on this it's a uh uh you know a brake light also so uh i'll show you that real quick the amber thing's really cool like i didn't know i would think it's such a thing but that's it's all about safety man i do think that the road glide and street glide does not have adequate lighting on the back when you get it so I'm, I'm real happy with all that stuff so all right let me shut the garage door and uh we'll see what this looks like just so you can get an idea of whether the black headlights for you or the chrome headlight or whatever all right so that cuts out all that artificial light and you get an idea that's really cool i like that a lot and i'll turn the bike off just so you can see what it looks like when she's parked in your driveway it's nice isn't it i like that a lot could have actually done maybe the black headlight but the chrome, you know, vent inserts, that would have worked too. So that's an idea, something to think about. We'll see, we might make some changes when the body changes, because this is, this is just the beginning. This is, like, again, like simple level one stuff, lighting and slip-ons, and then 
We'll get a little more intense pretty soon with custom wheels, which is not hard, but I understand it's a little bit more intimidating. And then after Daytona, April, May, June-ish, uh, we'll do the whole body swap. We're doing a custom paint with airbrush and all that fabulousness. So uh, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Any questions you got, I'm happy to answer. Again, I don't work for Custom Dynamics or anything, but I'm a big friggin' fan of their stuff. So any questions you got or opinions you wanna share, I'm looking at it now and, I'm, and I am, I wouldn't call it regret, but I'm regretting the black vent lights. Those in chrome with the black headlight, well, that would have been perfect. So, I mean, it looks cool, don't get me wrong, but those vent lights, if they were chrome, it would have been like all in. Maybe I need to purchase those for the build later because I'm not about to ask for another set of those. So, thanks again to Custom Dynamics. Great people, one of my absolute favorite companies. We've still got some other stuff to do as we do this. I have a Pro Beast horn in the corner, which I'm a huge believer in that product because I live and ride in South Florida, and everyone down here is trying to kill you. Every day they get up in the morning, they're like, I'm going to kill a motorcyclist today. Like, I feel like that's what they do when they get in their secondhand buy here, pay here, finance, schlock lot, BMW. Anyway, um, love you all to death. Take care of each other. We'll talk real soon. Bye.